Um, a few reasons. The first is actually um, has a story to do with um, my research assistant Chandra, who actually showed me a, a music video done by a friend of hers, and it was actually a chalkboard animation. And the, the first thing that that I thought of when I saw it was that's exactly what I want to do. And the reasons were many. One is that it's the chalkboard; it's the obvious educational metaphor. Um, the second is that I often labor in front of a chalkboard trying to explain things and it would be nice to actually be successful at that. Um, and I thought that an animation would actually allow me to explain things a lot better than I could normally just with my crude drawings in class or just my, with my verbal explanations. Um, so yeah, that's the reason for the chalkboard. Um, and the reason for the stop motion animation uh, in general has to do with um, uh, largely has to do with the zoomability option. That is, I, w w with this type of stop motion animation, particularly chalkboard animation, I can create animations where I zoom in on things. And this is particularly important for what I'm teaching. I'm teaching about biological concepts that often occur, w are dealing with concepts that, that exist at a molecular level. Um, and mo many students get confused by this simply because it's completely decontextualized. Often the representations are very abstract, even visual representations are quite abstract. And I found that just simply contextualizing things by zooming in on the organism or the cell even, a uh, single cell, is, is sufficient to actually add a, an extra level of understanding. It's mostly um, topics that are conceptually difficult. Um, they're the ones that I know uh, from experience just dealing with questions around exam times that students are struggling with these particular topics. So my hope is that these, these sorts of videos will actually improve their understanding. I'm expecting that, that first off, the, um, the, the animations themselves, I, I'm striving to make them as memorable as possible. So they have f some funny elements about them. They have some uh, little quirks about them that, that make them stand out. Each one, I hope to in interject at least one of those little quirky type things. Uh, so for example, one of the videos we did has me pulling actually chalk lines out of, out of the, the chalkboard itself um, in the form of uh, some thread. Um, and it's quite memorable, if nothing else. And uh, the reason I want to make it memorable, of course, is to make the actual concepts more memorable. Um, and I'm hoping that by watching these videos, students will actually be able to remember these concepts better, and that they'll actually perform better uh, when faced with more dip difficult applications of those concepts. Ah, so um, these, these videos are conceptualized largely as pre-tasks. So um, students will basically be asked to view these videos uh, on the course website or on YouTube. They'll actually be situated on both locations. Um, and they'll have a number of questions that they have to answer related to the videos. Um, so th essentially preparing them for uh, the tasks that will occur within the lecture, which will be more about use doing applications or case studies um, of the various concepts that they learn from the videos. So the time that I would have otherwise spent struggling uh, with verbal explanations and, and crude chalkboard drawings, I've now actually replaced with these chalkboard animations, leaving more time for application type learning uh, in the classroom. So the first piece of advice is to choose your, um, your topic um, carefully. That is, this is a time consuming process. Um, and you, you need to be sure that the effort that you're going to put into it is actually going to pay off in some way. Um, and I, I think I would also like to emphasize the fact that uh, planning is critical to the process. So uh, doing storyboards, uh, doing scripts, um, doing all this stuff in preparation the actual, of the actual video takes uh, will really save you time in the long run. It may, might feel like a lot of time up front, but it will save you a lot of time in the long run. This method re requires a, quite a bit of drawing. Now, um, the, the, it's been very interesting for me. I, I, I do have a background in the arts, so uh, I mean, I have a, I have a background in, in drawing and painting um, static images. And it's actually been very, I've learned a lot actually doing animation just about how the visual system works in terms of 
um, uh, learning how to, how to represent motion, uh, how you can do sorts of tricks. And you learn, you pick this up quite fast. So I can actually, at this point, now that I've done, I think, two or three long sets of sequences of images, I can, when I'm doing the drawings, already anticipate what the major issues will be in terms of perception of the motion. Um, so it, it is involved. I, I, I would say that um, if you don't have some degree of confidence in your ability to draw even rough images, uh, it, it might be particularly challenging. So, so the reason I do, I do all my drawings ahead of time, and that in part is because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Um, and what doing all those drawings ahead of time allows me to do is essentially use this projector as, and use them as template. So one thing that's very difficult on a, on a format this large is to do drawings that are actually, that remain um, uh, correct to your point of view. That is, it's, it's very easy for me to draw a, a face on a piece of paper or on a computer. But when I try to draw that face in, in a large scale, it, it can become quite skewed. As I said, you, you could follow the method that I did and do all the drawings ahead of time, but if you were confident enough and not so concerned with sort of the aesthetics of it and more, more, more just concerned about um, getting it down, you could probably bypass that step safely, I think, yeah. if, if, you know, if time is a concern. So this is, this sort of work is somewhat technical. That is, it involves you, um, I think the most in involved piece of it is actually learning the software that actually is used for uh, creating the animations and also for doing post-production of the animations. Um, but once you get over that relatively steep learning curve, um, it's something that can probably be moved increasingly to a, a one-man job. Um, if you're doing chalkboard animations and you're actually in the frame as, 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 a, as an actor in the frame, uh, you definitely need two people involved. It's not something you could do on your own. You need a sounding board too for, for ideas, but that was back and forth, I think. Um, I, don't, I don't think I could have done it. I couldn't have done it without you, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yeah.